Very pleased to be joined now by the new athletic director at Northwestern, Dr. Derek Gregg. Derek, first of all, congratulations. Welcome back to the Big Ten. I know you spent some time at Michigan earlier in your career. You told an interesting story in the news conference today about the fact that you know, this was a great opportunity and you know, when Northwestern calls, you, you listen. But he also said that they, or Morty Shapiro said that they had contacted you very early in the search process and you had declined to interview for the position. So what changed in the interim? What made you go from, I'm not sure I'm interested to, here you are now as the new athletic director? Well, and obviously, like I said, Northwestern is just one of the top premier jobs in all of athletics, not just the Big Ten, obviously. But I'd only been at the NCAA, everybody knows, about eight months. So really, my main hesitation was that. Mark Emmert, uh, you know, has done so such a good job with me and given me a great opportunity and also to be involved with the social justice movement. But really, a lot of discussion with my wife. And so she knows me better than anybody. Obviously, she's been on this ride with me for the past 27 years. She really was the one who said, listen, this has always been a dream of yours, Power 5 athletic director position, and look where it is, the best academic athletic combination that is around that you can find. So let's go through with it. Let's see where this thing is going to go. And uh, so we, we made a joint decision and decided to stick it out to the end, and it worked out. As you're certainly well aware, this has been a divisive last month on Northwestern's campus, in large part due to the challenges with this hire how will you get people into a position where they're kind of walking in lockstep with one another again? Right. And of course, that's always a concern. Whenever you have a change like this, and Jim Phillips is a great friend of mine. We came up in this business together. I remember being in the, the inaugural D1A Athletic Director Institute for basically understudies like we were back then. And so I have a lot of great respect for him. So when you have a major change like this, you always have people on so many different sides of the issue. So the new person coming in really needs to lean in with everybody, come in and communicate, come in and listen more than anything. This is a really challenging time, as you're well aware, in college athletics. There's so much change going on. Name, image, and likeness going to come online here on July the 1st. You've got the transfer portal, which is uh, going at a, a mind-numbing pace. How do you feel you're uniquely qualified to take over Northwestern at this point in light of those issues and to move the school forward? Right. I think my breadth of experience makes me uniquely qualified, starting out being a student athlete at a very similar institution. And so even and I mentioned in the press conference growing up in the household that I grew up in, just the dichotomy in my household, the combination of academic and and athletic excellence. And so that's exactly what we have here. And plus, I was an athletic director at the University of Tulsa most recently. Same type of pattern, high academic standards, high athletic expectations. Being at the places that I've been, we've had success everywhere that we've been together. And so I, I know that that will help translate as I come into this uh, championship type environment. You were heading up the equity and inclusion area at the NCAA. It's been something has been talked about quite a bit in the last year. What are the challenges that you see in that area and how can your experience help not just at Northwestern, but throughout the Big Ten? That's a great question. And one of the main things I was working on at the NCAA that I hope they carry forward is this Champions for Change initiative. And it really hones in on three things, starting with once we get post-pandemic, going on to campuses and there are three major areas. The first one is student athlete voice and call to action. And a lot of people will remember when George Floyd was killed, just the anger and some of the, the response that we got from many student athletes across the country. And so I, I've been in the middle of so many conversations, conversations that matter, critical conversations. Student athletes are asking for a lot of different things. It's not an all encompassing list, but they're asking for financial literacy. You talked about the NIL, that's very important. Do our student athletes know about taxes? They may make money off their image and likeness, but do they know how um, the government is going to deal with how the tax system is set up? They're asking to really, really focus on mental health. The second part of the Champions for Change program is supplier diversity. The NCAA supplier diversity program is fairly new, created in 2018. That was something that I was really working a lot on. 
And then the third piece is hiring processes. Derek Gregg, again, congratulations on this opportunity. We look forward to working with you here in the days and years to come. I appreciate it, Dave. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to seeing you.